Organized by our organization is that institutional arms of governance, the four decade long Boku civil unrest. And uh, we will first of all like appreciate the three arms of governance when it comes to the conference. In fact, surprise at the two side organization, we are not here today to chastise government, but we are here to appreciate some of the decisions taken by government with regards to the conflict. This is the first time we have seen all the three arms of government consistently speaking one thing, and that is the truth about Boko Chieftaincy conflicts. We, it started from the Supreme Court, the High Court ruling, sorry, in uh, 1958 about Boku, that uh, Kusasis are the legitimate owners of the land. Supreme Court ruled in 2003 that Boku Naba Abogurago Asigri Azoka II is the legitimate chief of the area. And since then, the President of the Republic of Ghana Nado Danko Akufuado also made very emphatic statements that so far as he has shown an oath to protect Ghanaians, he is abiding by the Supreme Court ruling. And um, he supported the judiciary. His interior minister also made the same emphatic statement. The defense minister made the same statement. The president of the National House of Chiefs also made the same statement. And um, the regional House of Chiefs also made the same statement. Members of parliament visited Boku, Naba, and they also made that same emphatic statement. This tells you that the three arms of government have been very consistent for the first time, saying one thing or one truth that will save the situation. And we believe there is the need for the enforcement of that truth. That is enforcement of the law. And uh, the judiciary in their jurisprudential wisdom has executed their mandated rule with excellence and in short closure of the Boku chieftaincy matter with a historic ruling. Various committees set by the previous government, led by prominent traditional leaders in the country, very experienced judges with high level of integrity, doing due diligence, taking into consideration every argument from both Kusasis and Mampurises over the Boku issue. Over the years, they are consistent and, and, and they, are, they are consistent on the Boku chieftaincy issue has not changed. The High Court ruling in 1958, 64 years ago, saying that Boku Naba Abogurago Asigri Azoka II is the legitimate paramount chief of Boku. 2003, the Supreme Court affirmed this same ruling and finalized that ruling by saying Boku Naba Abogurago Asigri Azoka II is the legitimate chief of Boku and therefore Mount Priestess should not return to the Supreme Court with the same chieftaincy issue. That brought finality to the matter. And as a civil society organization, we call on the IGP, the CDS, and the security apparatus to enforce the laws. Lo and behold, we will appreciate the IGP, Dr. Akufu Dampare. We will appreciate the CDS, uh, VRA Amwama, uh, VRA Amwama, and we will appreciate the Interior Minister, Honorable uh, uh, Ambrose Derry, and we will also appreciate the Defense Minister, uh, Honorable Dominic Nittywood. They listen to our call that the security apparatus need to visit the area. And lo and behold, they went there three weeks ago. They assess the situation for themselves, and 
they have realized that as a civil society organization, what we have been saying all this while is exactly what they have seen. And looking at the pronouncement from the interior minister, cautioning some of the sub-chiefs of Boku Naba, to be specific, that is Pusiga Naba, that they should not talk about Boku chieftaincy issues because Boku chieftaincy is not in dispute so far as the laws of this country is concerned. It was an emphatic statement supporting the status quo. And we believe that statement by, made by the interior minister was something that is appreciable. The defense minister also made the same statement. And now the question is, why should people continue perishing in Boku if there is no chieftaincy dispute? If the three arms of government have spoken, and yet there is conflict in Boku, what it means is that it is criminality. And who are those who are supposed to bring to the end of any criminal, criminal act in the country? That is the security, to be specific, the IGP. We are therefore calling the IGP and the state authorities that enough of the talk now let's walk the talk by putting action to bring lasting peace to the area. Adam GH as a civil society organization would like to extend our gratitude to the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Dan Kufado, for exhibiting great leadership by calling a spade a spade with regards to the Boku, the Boku chieftaincy issue and the Supreme Court ruling on Boku chieftaincy saga. We will also appreciate the Minister of Interior, Honorable Ambrose Derry, Minister of Defense and Interior, uh, and, and Inspector General of Police, IGP, that's uh, Dr. George Akufu Dampare, and uh, Chief of Defense Staff, CDS, that's the uh, VR Amwama, who visited Boku to assess the situation for themselves. This shows their commitment in ensuring peace and security in Boku. And we are so grateful. Our appreciation will not be complete without extending the same to the leadership of the member, uh, uh, membership of the National House of Chiefs. That's the President of the National House of Chiefs and the uh, President of the Upper East Regional House of Chiefs for making emphatic statements in the recent visit of the President to the National House of Chiefs at the Tomb Force Palace right in Kumasi here. Where the President House of Chiefs, the President of the National House of Chiefs, acknowledged the emphatic statement made by the Interior Minister, saying that they thank the Interior Minister for uh, also speaking into the status quo that there is no chieftaincy dispute in Boku. In fact, this is so refreshing to hear all the authorities that are in charge of chieftaincy matters in the country speaking one language. And this is so refreshing to the people of Boku. It is so refreshing to us as civil society organizations who started calling for the enforcement of the laws. And it's a refreshing statement by all Ghanaians. And I believe uh, the security are equally happy because when the Boku chieftaincy conflict comes to an end, they will all have their peace and come back to their various duty posts to continue their daily activities. Adam G. had monitored the meeting between the minister the ministers and the security command with the Boku Naba Abugurago as Sigri Azoka II and the Mamprisi leaders and the youth of Boku where they made this emphatic statement that Boku chieftaincy is not in dispute. The question we are asking is why should someone disagreement with the Supreme Court ruling led to the death of over 60 people and up to now, the law enforcement agencies could not enforce the law. What is the law saying about someone disobeying the ruling of the Supreme Court? What punishment should be given to someone whose lawlessness or actions or inaction led to the death of innocent people? What is the security afraid of in enforcing the law? What precedents are the what precedents are the security setting ahead of future ruling by the Supreme Court on similar matters?
if they cannot enforce this current Supreme Court ruling? Should Boko retrogress in development just because some people decided to act with impunity? As we speak as a civil society organization, our, our happiness is not complete until we see the vulnerable women and children in Boku happily going about their daily activities. We see mom, our brothers, mom princes, and kusases coming together, working together with happiness as they used to be, with everlasting peace, and they can go about their daily activities without any uh, crime against humanity. As a civil society organization, we do not believe that the law enforcement agencies need to be lenient with the, with the law breakers or people acting with criminality. The president of the National House of Chiefs on the 5th of October 2022, appreciation of the president of the, uh, of, uh, sorry, appreciation of the interior minister, emphatic statement made that Zugrana Abugrago Azikri Azoka II is the only legitimate chief was a refreshing news to them. And if this is a statement from the president of the National House of Chiefs, I believe it's also refreshing news to all of us that the authorities have spoken one language from day one, and we are expecting the security apparatus to enforce the laws. How are they going to enforce the laws? We believe the status quo has spoken, the three arms of government have been consistent, and yet we have a group of people with a leader saying he is a regent of Boku. And I believe, with all due respect to the, our laws of the land, the security should not be lenient in arresting anybody carrying himself as a parallel chief in Boku. And I believe when this thing is done and the law is fully enforced, and anyone who put a shirt and put any inscription that he is original chief of Boku, if that person is arrested and the law is fully enforced, Boku will be the best place for everybody, including you, the media, especially the security, and all of us. Boku chieftaincy conflict, the victims are not only limited to the people of Boku. We know a lot of police officers who are not even coming from any part of the train or the region who were shot dead. A lot of people died who are not Kusasis, nor Mampresis, nor even Nordness. And I believe it's a national disaster. And if we have a situation that can claim lives over 60 lives, it is not something that we should be lenient in punishing anybody who acts with impunity or whose action is causing the country this great mayhem. This is the time for the law to be enforced fully. All the relevant state institutions have done their part. What is left now is the enforcement of the, uh, of the agencies that have the authority to enforce the laws. Nobody should carry himself as regent in Boku. And I believe if this is done, we will have lasting peace. Last but not the least, we are also calling on His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Bawubia, my very good friend and a brother, who is a son from the law. He is a brother to both Kusasis and Mampresis. And he is the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. And he is the chairman of the Police Council. We are calling, uh, we are calling on him to, to pay the bull by the horn. By calling on the law enforcement agencies that are under him, but the chairman of the police council to fully enforce the law. He is the son from the law, and if his voice has spoken, the interior minister has spoken, the National House of Chiefs has spoken, he is the son from the law, and we expect to hear from him. He should so he should let us understand whether he follows the status quo or he also thinks otherwise. He is seeking to be the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, one of the great political parties in the country that is in government. 
And to lead a good party like this, he is likely to succeed his boss, the president. And if his boss, the president, has made very emphatic statements, and he is a son from the north, he is a brother to both Kusasis and Mampresis, though he is a Mampresis, we are calling on him to add the vo his voice to the status quo. And I believe if his own brothers hear his voice, it will be so refreshing. And this will help silence the guns in Boku. As a civil society organization, we appreciate all the authorities that are in charge of chieftaincy matters in this country. But they said uh, uh, in Nakan, they have a proof in Nakan, say, they should enforce their laws. Enough of the talk, they should walk the talk. And let us have everlasting peace in Boku. And let all man priests and kusasas come back together as brothers and sisters as they used to uh, do their business together with happiness without any uh, uh, fear or panic. We thank you all for your time, for being with us this morning.